Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome to this week's tutorial. This week we're working on this really beautiful watercolor flower and I thought this would be a really great transition going from Inktober where I had done a ton of flower drawings into watercolor which is what I had really really wanted to focus on drawing flowers in and I'm really happy that I could come into this with a little bit more confidence than I could before October. So to get started my materials are Arches Rough 140 pound watercolor paper, M Graham watercolors, and I'll talk about those a little bit as we go and I'm using an assortment of brushes. If you are curious about any of the materials that I used, please check the description box down below. I'll have them all linked. Now this painting was so much fun because I got to use some colors that I have had in my collection for a little bit but I don't have a ton of use for them in my daily art practice. So to get started I'm using a very light light mixture of quinacridone rose. This is such a beautiful color and it's so vibrant and just I love M. Graham's quinacridone colors. I love quinacridone colors in general, like in any paint brand, but I really do love them in this one. For this base layer, I did add just the tiniest bit of permanent alizarin crimson since I did think it would be perhaps a little bit too bright, um, especially since this base layer is really just to have that lightest tone and I didn't want that practically neon color, even in its lightest value, to be so in your face uh, in the final drawing. And then once I dried, I went in with the same mixture and I'm just really going in and differentiating some of those petal shapes. Uh, as you can see, I did a base drawing before I started and I used a Prismacolor Color Erase pencil. I used it in light gray and I'm someone who really doesn't mind having my pencil drawings show through so if you're someone that you're not going to like that then perhaps a watercolor pencil would be a really good choice for you. Now once those had dried I went in and I'm still using my number six brush and I'm just adding in some little segmented lines. I'm using kind of a flicking motion with my brush and I'm just trying to pay attention to the flow of the petals. If you can see in my base drawing I did have those kind of guidelines put in there. I did have them be a little bit lighter than the actual guidelines for the flower itself in the different petal shapes, but they are still there. They are still visible. You're not going to see them by the time the painting is done, but it really did help me quite a bit get my bearings on how I was going to do this drawing throughout. Now, you can use a smaller brush if you want to. I really like these brushes. It has a really nice kind of flexible tip. It's the Princeton Velvet Touch, I believe, and it's a number six, so it isn't like a, like a natural hair brush. It is synthetic, so it has a really really nice spring to it so I can very easily use the very end of my brush and then blend it out and have a really wide brush stroke if I want to whereas if I picked a smaller brush I really wouldn't have that flexibility and I find myself switching back and forth quite a bit and I just don't like that it seems to hold me up in my workflow so this is my go-to brush and then you can see once I did some of those really structural shadow lines I went in and I went full-blown quinacridone rose uh, with this one and I knew that it was going to be part of a shading layer so I went extremely concentrated all around uh, that center part of the flower and then a watered down brush and just took from that center portion and flicked outward and I really wanted to make sure to maintain that that kind of linear look the the petal structure when I was flicking outward and not just do this radial uh, blending out with my brush I really wanted to be mindful of that and you can see that it really did blend it out quite a bit in the bit of the flower in the more center but right at that very very center that is still a little bit saturated and that's fine because that's going to be pretty dark by the end of our painting and then I wanted to do the same thing at the ends of the leaves or ends of the petals rather and as you can see I'm not doing the entire outside of the petal. I am paying attention to my reference photo relatively closely and I am seeing where the shadows are within the petals. Uh, since these are imperfect shapes, you're going to have a lot of variation in the petals just based on how it's kind of sitting and flowing and I wanted to pay attention to that so that not all of the the outside of it was going to be the same. So you can see that I put down a really thick concentration and then blended that out with water again. And now you can see that I'm just going in with a finer brush and really starting to narrow in on those finer details. And that's what we're going to be doing for the rest of the painting. So for this brush I'm using a relatively small one. I actually don't know the size of this brush. It came in a 
value pack and it was one of those absurdly large value packs where you get like 50 brushes and you spend like three dollars on it. Uh, so none of them are really marked. I just kind of grab and go but I actually really enjoy this this brush. And then as I go I start to add a little bit of variation in the color. So the entire flower you could do this as a value study if you wanted to. You could use a single color but for me I wanted to use a little bit of a variation to help show the darker values in it. So none of these are going to be really absolute values but as I go I'm adding quinacridone violets, I'm adding dioxazine violets, maroon perylene, pyrrole red, various purples, and just really kind of mixing and doing what felt right within the petal structure. And again, as I'm going, I'm making sure to follow those lines and really honor the structure and the flow of the petal, uh, paying attention to what areas are going to be the darkest and what are going to be the lightest, maintaining my colors but watering them down in the lighter sections and using a more concentrated mix in the darker ones. And then as you can see, I just add a battery to uh, the corner of my paper. This isn't for anything in particular. If you followed me for a while, you know that sometimes I put objects on my desk to kind of mimic light sources. Um, and in this case, I'm really just trying to keep my paper pinned down because as you can see, when I lift my hand off, it does fold up a little bit. And for me, that changes the perspective a little bit. And I, I just, it's a personal preference. I could tape it down, but I turn my page a lot. So it just doesn't work for me. Um, perhaps in the future, I'll get some sort of board that I could rotate and tape my paper down. Uh, that's always an option, but for me, my camera goes through batteries like no one's business, so I always have several on hand, and I just put them down. For the inner part of the flower, I did want that to be the darkest, so you'll see that is where I have kind of the most color variation, as it gets to be more of a purple. Now, for me, I decided to just use colors, so this is, I would say, maybe a little bit more artificial. I used a lot of my quinacridone violets and my dioxazine violets, and mixed that with my quinacridone rows, but what you could do is play around with your colors a little bit and add some complementary colors to add a more realistic shading uh, to the inner part of your flower, but that's not necessary. I really like how this came out, but it is something to keep in mind if you wanted to add perhaps like a green or something um, to add a little bit more shadow to it. That is an option. And that's basically what I'm just going to go through and do throughout this entire flower. Keep doing that flicking motion and add in all of those shadows in details. And you will see that I do go back and forth between brushes. Uh, I am sticking relatively small with a lot of it, but I am not concerned when I go in with a larger brush. Uh, keep in mind when I do grab a larger brush, it is so that I can add a lot of color at once and then blend it out with uh, a brush with just water on it. And when I'm going in with my smaller brush, I'm really just sticking on details that really aren't going to be blended out in the end. And I would say if you're doing a flower painting at home, these will be good tips depending on whatever flower you chose to do. Like you definitely don't have to do this kind of flower, but really just paying attention to the folds and the shadows and the veining within the flowers will really help you. And really trying to vary your colors in whatever flower that you decide to do. And really try to pick apart your image when you're looking at it. Looking, looking at it very critically, really notice what colors you're seeing will help you a lot in creating the kind of depth that you will want in your final drawing. Also, while we had a minute, I wanted to say that I am thinking of starting a page for some longer form tutorials and real-time videos. As some of you may know, not a lot of people like to have really long videos on YouTube, so I really try to keep those relatively short and a lot of my paintings are a bit longer. So if you would be interested in seeing some of those longer form tutorials or, or real-time videos, let me know. I also wanted to say that if you are interested in any original artwork or prints, I have those available on my website that'll be linked down below for you to check it out. And then as we're finishing up with our petals of our flower, I did go through and just kind of define some of those petal shapes uh, before going in and working on the center part of the flower. I did end up having that be like a purple color, so I just went in with my quinacridone violets, and while that dried, I just kind of touched up some of those areas. Like I said, I did define 
find those petal shapes in the center and I ended up doing them pretty dark. I ended up using a little bit of maroon perline mixed in with my quinacridone rose and um, a little bit of my dioxazine violet. So I ended up being kind of dark and in order to balance that a little bit, I did go through and just darken up some of the other shadows that were within those petals, both at the very center and at the outer edge of the flower. And I really wanted it to be like a, a high contrast image. I really wanted you to see the variation within the petals. I just, I loved the intense lighting that ended up being in this final image and I just thought it was a lot of fun. And then once I was happy with uh, the rest of the flower, I ended up going in and I used a very concentrated mix of my dioxazine violet and I just used a very tiny brush to stipple in some little dots just to give it some texture and I really focused on the outer edge of it to give it just a little bit of dimension, a little bit of like a rounded shape and then I worked on again darkening up some of that flower as you can see. I never really know when to stop and then once I really did think I was happy with the flower I went in with a micron pen and I just decided to do the smallest bit of details when it came to adding some high contrast to the flower uh, mainly around the very center portion of the flower I also stippled in a little bit in that center part along with the purple and then a couple of just little tiny markings around the base of the individual petal structures just to really bump up that contrast and that is the final image I hope that you enjoyed this video and you like this tutorial if you end up doing this on your own I would absolutely love it if you would tag me on Instagram so that I could see it I love seeing your guys's paintings and I look forward to talking to you all next week bye